All right, resources uh, to flip your classroom. And so uh, as we go through this one, make sure uh, you are filling out, you're evaluating uh, the resources worksheet that uh, accompanies this. Um, you'll have a chance at the end to go back through and uh, take a look at some of the things that uh, we talk about in this uh, little lesson on resources. Just a reminder that uh, your emphasis should not really be on the videos themselves, although they are important, uh, but they are not uh, the main thing to flipping the classroom. The main thing about flipping the classroom is uh, the interaction that takes place in your classroom because of those video lessons. And so uh, remember that uh, interaction after the video is, is much more important than actually uh, the video. But uh, I'm going to show you how to do the video and, and do them easily quickly and efficiently. So basically what do you need? You need some type of a screen recording software. There's tons of free stuff out there. Uh, we'll go through those here in a little bit. Um, if you don't want to use screen recording software, if you have a video or webcam, uh, some of those things will do the uh, serve the same purpose. Some type of a website or a learning management system such as uh, Edmodo or Moodle uh, my big campus things like that you just need somewhere to host uh, your videos when, when you create your videos kinda like an online course uh, or even a, a teacher website would do that as well uh, or a YouTube channel is is the same thing as a hosting service we'll talk about that here in a second you also need a headset or a microphone in order to obviously record your voice and uh, you'll need uh, obviously a prepared lesson and so have something uh, ready to go. Don't uh, just try to wing it. Otherwise, uh, your students will quickly catch on that uh, you're winging it and uh, don't have something prepared. Now, screen recording software, something to uh, record your screen with, uh, anything that's on your screen. So uh, what I'm using right now is actually called Screencast-O-Matic. It's free. It allows me up to, I believe, 15 minutes of record time which then uh, just by a click of a button allows me to upload to YouTube. And so if that uh, is your route, then uh, take a look at Screencast-O-Matic and definitely have to uh, evaluate that resource for you. There's also Jing. Jing is free. Uh, allows for up to five minutes. Um, this one's not bad. Uh, in my opinion, I've, I use it for certain things. I use it for screenshots and things like that because it allows me to annotate. Um, and it's a decent one as well. Uh, Camp Studio I have not used. I, I've, I've tried it. Uh, it wasn't for me, but uh, it can always be for you. It's free. Not sure on what the uh, time limits and things are. And so you'll have to uh, evaluate that if that's for you. Camtasia uh, costs money, although it is, uh, I think, uh, worth the money. It's, it's an excellent uh, resource. Uh, to use if you're going to uh, really extend your um, flipping the classroom model and really use it a lot. Um, Camtasia could be a, a resource for you. That It really allows you to do a lot of different things that some of these free ones don't allow you to do. There's also Google Chrome extensions that will record uh, what goes on in your browser and so that's something uh, to take a note of as well uh, especially if you're doing a lot of internet based stuff and so uh, search the Google Chrome web store for different extensions or kind of plugins that you can use. As mentioned, uh, if you do go do go the screen recording route, uh, you'll probably need a microphone or a headset. Don't rely on the one that's built into your computer. Uh, a lot of background noise and um, just uh, sometimes you sound very far away or like you're in a box. And so invest in one. Uh, go on Amazon, just search for a USB headset or microphone and really 10 15 bucks will get you a decent one webcam or document camera if you're going to be using something like that uh, it's pretty interesting a lot of those come with uh, built-in recording softwares things like that that you can use and so take a look at uh, if, if you need that if you don't need it not necessary tool um, but if you want to show something uh, it's well worth uh, you can again go on Amazon and get a webcam for 10 bucks. Document cameras are a little more spendy, but you can also use your webcam kind of as the same type of tool. You'll need a website, uh, something to uh, put your videos on, links, uh, whatever you're going to use. And uh, you can use your school site, uh, website. 
uh, if you so choose. Uh, some problems you might run into though, you might upload, uh, you might uh, run into issues with file sizes um, or using up your quota uh, very quickly as uh, these video files uh, tend to be large depending on how long they are, how much movement you have in them, things like that. And so um, that's an option. You can also you know, use Google Sites or Weebly or uh, something else to make a free website uh, and host your videos on there. Uh, you can create many, you can create as many Google Sites as you want uh, for your classes, uh, topics, whatever. And so take a look at that. Um, could run into the same issues of file size and using up quota rather quickly. You can also use a YouTube channel. Uh, this uh, is outlined uh, in a couple links uh, below this video here on uh, how to create a YouTube channel. If you have a Google account, you already uh, have a YouTube account for the most part. And so you can log in and create a YouTube channel. Um, post all your videos on there. Uh, you can then apply for up to more than 15 minutes of video um, and go from there. YouTube also allows you to edit, add captions, add different things too. There's a lot there. And so uh, if you're interested, go ahead and evaluate that YouTube channel. Again, uh, some schools block YouTube, and so you have to um, evaluate what's best for you. School Tube's another one, um, screencast.com, things like that. And so just look at uh, uh, somewhere to host uh, those files for you, uh, what's going to meet your needs if you need to build a website and set up a YouTube channel and link and do things like that. You need to, again, evaluate what's best for you in your situation, uh, taking into account things that are blocked um, and the resources that you have. Just a reminder that these video uh, files tend to be large, and so where will you store those files uh, when you're completed? Are you going to store them online? Are you going to store them uh, on a USB drive? Are you going to store them on an external hard drive? Uh, school server, I, I do uh, stress that you need to talk to your tech person uh, before you start saving large videos and lots of videos on your school server. And as well as uh, you know what happens to those over the summer, a lot of times things get cleaned out, uh, re-imaged and things, and so uh, saving them in the correct spot uh, is beneficial. You can get a USB hard drive, a big one, you know, a couple gig for uh, you know 10, 15 bucks, and so uh, go out there and buy yourself a USB drive, stick them on that USB drive, uh, and you're good to go. Burn them to a CD, burn them to a DVD, whatever you need to do. But you also need to uh, understand that you need to put those video files somewhere so you can access them again next year, and your students can access them. A couple other things that you want to uh, kind of keep in mind: Are you going to be drawing online? Um, interactive whiteboard software is perfect for that. Uh, your smart board or Promethean board or whatever you have, uh, go ahead and uh, use that software. If you're if you're screencasting, very easy. It'll show. Uh, you can write over things. Uh, Microsoft Paint uh, built into your operating system. It's there. It's free. Go ahead and use that. Just Google free online drawing board, and you'll come up with probably uh, tons of options as well. You need to use manipulatives. Uh, again, your interactive whiteboard software is good for that. Also, the National Library of Virtual Manipulatives is uh, something that uh, you should take note of, uh, especially in the math area, math, uh, and, you know, some science stuff out there, but mostly math. Use your document camera or your webcam, too, to show manipulatives that you already have uh, in your classroom. And so don't forget about that kind of stuff. It doesn't have to all be online. Uh, if you have a document camera or webcam, you can record yourself doing different things. You need to use a calculator. There's those that are online uh, built into your computer within your uh, interactive whiteboard software. Stuff that you already have built in. Um, software you already have on your computer uh, might have a calculator. Go ahead and use that. Uh, if you need to scale, uh, you can go online. Just Google uh, virtual scale and things will come up. Use Google Earth, uh, Google Street View. Um, use the, the stuff that you already have on your computer or your online resources that you already have. Uh, to make those uh, uh, presentations a little more engaging. And so uh, just a couple things there to keep in mind, some of the things that you need, some of the resources that you need, uh, screen recording software or video or webcam, a website or hosting service in order to uh, put your videos on, uh, make connections, things like that, um, a microphone, 
and then uh, any other resources that you use you don't don't just be uh, drilled into the PowerPoint or whatever um, use different online resources to get your point across to uh, show what you mean uh, in any different subject area it doesn't have to be math or science you can do it in social studies uh, art uh, you can use your document camera record yourself um, whatever just uh, think outside the box a little bit go with it make your videos and uh, have a little fun because if you're having fun uh, chances are your students are having fun as well